When Global Air Force missions require deployment, the location can be anywhere, from the burning sands of the desert to the sub-freezing Arctic. Civil engineering personnel must be ready to support contingency and training operations with little or no notice, meeting all challenges with peak performances, thereby assuring mission accomplishment. Whether for short-term deployments or the early stages of a long-term deployment, efforts must be focused on satisfying the most pressing need, human survival. It's essential bear-based forces have shelter, food, and water. This assures survival to perform the tasks at hand. Inherent within these needs is a basic yet primary consideration. Every training or military field operation depends on adequate sanitation facilities. Prime beef teams must be able to construct field latrines, starting on day one of any deployment where facilities do not exist. It's critical activity for the bed down of initial forces. This video will familiarize the viewer with the importance of field sanitation site planning considerations prior to latrine construction, and identify a number of different types of expedient latrines available for use. Lack of adherence to proper field sanitation standards and personal hygiene can quickly cripple a unit or even an entire bear base operation. Poor sanitation and improper waste disposal under wartime conditions greatly increase the disease vector potential. Common pests are flies, mosquitoes, and rodents. Even where ground forces move frequently, camp followers have historically amplified sanitation problems. This results in disease and diarrhea epidemics causing many casualties. During previous conflicts, the casualty rate from disease and other non-battle causes invariably exceeded the combat casualty rate. This is especially true for theaters of operation with high temperatures. The prevalence of disease and poor living conditions combined endangers the health of the troops. In such areas, non-battle casualties commonly outnumber battle casualties. The ratio is four to one. Despite medical and technological advances, the threat from insect-borne disease and sanitation hazards remain as real today as it was in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Computer simulations conducted by Air Force medical entomologists predict that about 95% of troops deployed to areas with poor sanitation and high rates of insect-borne diseases would contract malaria within 240 days. Proper application of field sanitation and insect control methods deter malaria. Research indicates the malaria rate would not exceed 5%. Manpower is the most valuable asset during any contingency response. It's essential that all efforts be made to conserve and protect this vital human resource. The process of collecting and satisfactorily disposing of human waste has historically involved a number of problems. These include the prevention of disease, reduction of odors and air pollutants, and minimizing contamination of the soil and receiving waters. These same problems face our contingency forces today. However, the United States Air Force is now also committed to achieving and maintaining environmental quality. This will ensure long-term access to the air, land, and water needed to protect our country's future interests. Maintaining a high level of environmental quality during contingency and training operations presents a difficult challenge. Current waste treatment procedures must be examined and modified to reflect new challenges since environmental compliance has now been placed high on the priority list. If human waste is not treated properly, pests can intrude barracks, contaminate food, water, and air. Proper integrated pest management significantly reduces the risk of vector-carried disease. It also helps protect water, wildlife, and other natural resources. Improper use of these insecticides and repellents can damage the environment and impede on personal health. Many pesticides are nerve agents, which may set off chemical alarms. It could also adversely affect personnel through direct contact with their food, water, and air. 
awareness of safe handling procedures for these chemicals is mandatory. Especially keep in mind the presence of any water runoff contamination. When chemicals are used, a record of the location, type of chemical, and amount used should be recorded. For more contingency pest management operations information, refer to AFI 32-1053 or the Department of Defense Instruction 4150.7, DD Form 1532-1. Misuse due to ignorance or carelessness with these chemicals could negate any health benefits received by the treatment. It will also compromise the objective. The rule of thumb for contingency operations is to minimize impacts to human health and environment without impairing the mission. Now, with a good understanding of how the treatment of human waste can impact the total picture, let's look at specific details that must be considered prior to the construction of any field latrine facilities. Sanitation in a theater of operation consists of providing facilities for human waste disposal and basic personal hygiene. When available, existing facilities should be utilized. Inspect and repair structures as required. These initial facilities can be utilized to support the deployed forces. Additional material, supplies, equipment, and personnel can be flown in. They'll provide more suitable engineering solutions, such as prepackaged deployable latrines. In the absence of any pre-existing facilities, various types of expedient field latrines should be considered. But before any construction actually begins, careful planning is a must. It will protect the environment and personnel health. When determining which latrines are to be constructed, consider this. The length of the stay, the type of soil, prevalent weather conditions, the slope of the land, water sources, and the groundwater levels. In Vietnam, for example, high water tables posed serious constraints on site selection. As a result, the burnout latrine was conceived. It was used on a wide scale. There are considerations when determining the specific location within the base for construction of the latrines. First, consider the protection of food and water from contamination. Secondly, the accessibility to the users. Keep in mind, for a large number of people in a remote location, the facilities must be transportable, easily and quickly installed, and easily maintained by unskilled personnel. Select a location that is at least 100 yards from the kitchen area and at least 100 feet from the nearest water source. Drainage at the latrine site should slope away from all water sources. Good drainage around shower and lavatories is critical. Any standing pools of water becomes a breeding ground for unwelcome pests. To protect water from contamination, do not extend the depth of any latrine below the groundwater level. Soil conditions may not permit the excavation of pits. However, as a guide, allow one foot of depth for each week of estimated use, plus one foot of depth for dirt cover for closure, up to a maximum of six feet deep. Cold temperatures may prevent the use of exposed collection tanks because of both freezing and the inhibition of the natural bacteriological breakdown process could occur. In each latrine shelter, provide toilet paper on suitable holders. If outside, use a tin can as a cover to keep it dry. Place canvas or brush screens around latrines, or, if possible, enclose them with tents. In cold climates, heaters can be installed. Keep latrines clean and maintain a good insect control program, thereby reducing odors and curtailing insect breeding. Spray the inside of the shelters with a residual insecticide twice weekly. When a latrine pit is filled to within one foot from the surface or it is to be abandoned, move the latrine structure away and treat the pit as follows. Spray the pit contents side walls and the ground surface extending two feet from the side walls with insecticide. Fill the pit to ground level with successive three-inch layers of earth, 
packing each layer down before adding the next one. Then mound the pit over with at least one foot of earth and spray again with insecticide. Place a rectangular sign on top of the mound indicating the type of pit and the date it was closed. If possible, photograph the site for final documentation of proper pit closure. The number of latrine facilities to be built will depend on the number of personnel expected to be brought into the base. For planning purposes, assume that one toilet will serve about 17 personnel. Urinals may be substituted for one-third of the minimum required number of toilets supporting the male forces. Since today's Air Force personnel is comprised of about 16 percent women, plan on providing a corresponding percentage of latrine facilities for the female population. Separate facilities must be provided for the women. Expedient field latrines can be expanded to support additional personnel, but should not be considered as long-term solutions. These expedient construction methods should be considered only as an alternative to normally accepted techniques. It should only be used when materials, equipment, time, or other constraints dictate. The best military scenario is to be deployed into a theater of operations which has existing sanitary facilities. However, when such facilities are lacking, a plan must be executed to allow for field sanitation practices as quickly as possible. During the early stages of most deployments, expedient field methods will have to be used initially for the disposal of human waste until more sophisticated units can be installed. Even when Harvest Falcon and Eagle assets are employed, there may be locations on base which must be served with expedient facilities due to distances from main utility networks. In those instances where no mobility assets are available, field expedient methods will be the only option. We will look at a variety of latrine types that may be utilized in the field depending on specific field conditions. Remember that along with latrines, some type of hand washing device must also be constructed to ensure personnel hygiene. Soap and water must be made available to combat the ever-present threat of disease. Until more sophisticated lavatories can be constructed, a simple hand washing device similar to this can be made. You will need two by four inch boards, rope, and two utility cans. When available, chemical latrines are the most extensively used latrine option. These latrines can be moved easily. The number of servicing units can be added to or reduced depending upon the requirements at hand. Chemical latrines are usually leased from a contractor. It's responsible for the maintenance, service, and waste removal. Contractors relieve CE personnel for more vital mission-oriented activities. Maintenance should include cleaning and pumping out waste periodically. This will keep odors caused by anaerobic decay of waste to a minimum. This provides a quick solution for the immediate need for field sanitation. However, if the deployment site is very remote, contractors may not be available to perform this service. Remember, the following expedient techniques are rudimentary at best and only intended for short-term usage until more sophisticated systems can be installed. The straddle trench latrine consists of one foot wide trenches dug two and a half feet deep and four feet long. Trenches should be at least two feet apart. A trench this size can accommodate two people at the same time. The general rule is that you need a 16 foot trench for every 100 people. The earth removed during digging is piled at the end of the trench and is then used to cover excretia and toilet paper. There are no seats in this type of latrine. Boards may be placed along both sides of the trench. It allows for better footing. When the latrine has been filled to within one foot of the surface or abandoned, it must be properly closed. Due to the lack of privacy, crudeness, and unacceptability in sandy soils, 
This method should only be considered as a last resort. A borehole latrine consists of a round hole with a diameter of about 18 inches and from 6 to 20 feet deep, covered by a one-hole latrine box. A covered metal drum with both ends removed can be sunk into the ground and used as a box. Attach a fly-proof seat cover with a self-closing lid to the top of the drum. This type of latrine is satisfactory for small deployments or remote work locations provided the necessary mechanical equipment for boring the hole is available. Pail latrines can be used when conditions are not suitable for dug pit type latrines. A standard type latrine box may be used as a pail latrine. Place hinged doors on the rear of the box, add a floor, and set a pail under each seat. The pails should be cleaned daily, more often if necessary. After cleaning, prior to being replaced, the pails should contain one inch of disinfectant, such as Clorox. Waste from the pails may be disposed of by burning or by hauling to a suitable area and buried. The burnout latrine may be utilized when the soil conditions make digging pits difficult. It is also particularly suitable to jungle areas with high water tables. Its ease of construction, portability, and maintenance make it one of the best latrines to use during deployments. Put a half gallon of fuel oil in the empty can prior to use. Before burning the waste, add an additional half gallon and then ignite. Reburn a second time with the addition of another half gallon of fuel and bury any remaining dry ash. Use caution during the burning process and make every effort to stay upwind out of the smoke. A deep pit latrine is a pit with a latrine box placed over it. The standard latrine box has four seats. Use a metal deflector on the inside to prevent urine from soaking into the wood. Allow a depth of one foot for each week of estimated use, plus one foot of depth for dirt cover when it's to be closed. Digging the pit more than six feet is generally not desirable due to the chances of walls caving in. Rocks or a high groundwater level may also limit the depth this type of latrine can be dug. In the absence of a sewage system or modular field deployable latrines, the ventilated improved pit offers the best option for human waste disposal. However, the deployment conditions, the lack of materials, personnel, and or time may eliminate the use of this type of latrine. When properly designed and constructed, they are sanitary, devoid of odors, and insects. They differ from traditional pit latrines by having a vertical vent pipe with a fly screen at the top. It generates a strong updraft of air through the latrine pedestal. Latrines should be oriented so that the maximum amount of direct sunlight reaches the black vent pipes. The venting feature and resultant airflow minimizes odors in the latrine itself. The fly screen discourages the breeding of flies and mosquitoes in the pit. To cut down on the number of structures required, urinals and urine soakage pits should also be provided. A soakage pit acts as a reservoir from which water is gradually absorbed into the surrounding soil. Its effectiveness depends on the groundwater table and soil permeability. It consists of a hole dug four foot square, approximately four foot deep, and should ideally be filled with large stones on the bottom followed by smaller ones, then fine gravel on top. In the absence of appropriate fill materials, field forces can improvise and use broken glass, flattened tin cans, or other suitable coarse contact materials. Two ventilating shafts should be inserted prior to filling. This enables the evaporation and aeration of the urine, thereby facilitating the waste degradation process. This urine soakage pit can be turned into a urinal, Simply insert pipes fitted with funnels made out of sheet metal or tar paper. Fill the funnels with straw or grass to keep out the flies. If materials are available, a trough may be constructed out of sheet metal or wood lined with tar paper. Dimensions can vary depending on the construction supplies available. Make certain the trough has enough slope to carry the liquid to the discharge corner where a pipe allows the urine to run into the soakage pit. Once some type of basic waste collection and sanitation facilities have been constructed, gears begin shifting.
efforts will be directed toward installing piping, lift stations, and waste holding tanks for the field deployable latrine. It's contained within the Harvest Eagle and Falcon wastewater system package. The system consists of two latrine units. They fit end to end inside a standard four section temper tent and can support 275 people. Each unit contains six toilets, a urinal trough, and a hand washing sink. Until the complete wastewater disposal system can be installed, be prepared to operate with other types of waste holding tanks, boxes, or trailers for an extended period of time. In any contingency scenario, you will have several concurrent competing bed down demands vying for immediate attention. For a complete operation and maintenance guide, refer to Technical Order 35E 35-5-1. Above all, do not take the subject of field sanitation lightly. Yielding to the temptation to relax sanitation standards can cost the health of the deployed forces, influencing their morale and combat readiness. Commitment to the military service involves doing the best job possible in any given assignment, whether at a stateside military base or a remote, dense jungle which never sees the light of day. This training program has stressed proper field sanitation and personal hygiene in remote deployments, which are essential elements in the combat readiness formula. Many different types of expedient field latrines are available for use. Careful pre-deployment planning will assure that correct types are utilized to minimize the risk to human health and the environment. All U.S. Air Force personnel involved in these operations play an important part in protecting the environment, thereby preserving our natural resources for future generations. Regardless of the sophisticated nature and quantities of the weapon systems available to U.S. forces, unless personnel are well enough to use them, they can be rendered essentially useless. Contingency operations present a real challenge to bear base planners when expedient field sanitation methods must be relied upon. Relaxation of sanitation standards can cost the health of the deployed forces, thereby endangering the combat situation and impacting mission objectives.